The Science Success Center with funding from Title V presents The Tour of the Cell, a biology workshop. Hi, I'm Steve. A light microscope works by passing visible light through a specimen, such as a microorganism or a thin slice of animal or plant tissue. Magnification is the increase in the apparent size of an object, whereas resolution is a measure of the clarity of an image. By the mid-1800s, the discovery of cells led to the cell theory which states that all living things are composed of cells and that all cells come from other cells. The electron microscope has a much greater resolution than the light microscope. The higher resolution has allowed biologists to explore the complex internal anatomy of a cell. One example of an electron microscope is a scanning electron microscope, which is used to study the detailed architecture of cell surfaces. The SEM uses an electron beam to scan the surface of a cell or group of cells. Another example of an electron microscope is a transmission electron microscope, which is used to study the details of internal cell structure. Bacteria and archaea consist of prokaryotic cells. A prokaryotic cell lacks a nucleus. The DNA of a prokaryotic cell is coiled into a region called the nucleoid, which has no membrane surrounding the DNA. The ribosomes of prokaryotes are smaller and differ somewhat from those of eukaryotes. Outside the plasma membrane of most prokaryotes is a fairly rigid, chemically complex cell wall. The wall protects the cell and helps maintain its shape. In some prokaryotes, another layer, a sticky outer coat called a capsule, surrounds the cell wall and further protects the cell surface. In addition to capsules, some prokaryotes have surface projections. Short projections called pili help attach prokaryotes to surfaces, while longer projections called flagella may propel the prokaryote cell through its liquid environment. The nucleus with its nuclear membrane, multiple chromosomes, and nucleolus is the most obvious difference between a prokaryotic and eukaryotic cell. A eukaryotic cell also has various organelles in the cytoplasm. These membrane-bounded structures perform specific functions in the cell. The structures and organelles of eukaryotic cells can be organized into four basic functional groups as follows. The nucleus, ribosomes, endoplasmic reticulum, and Golgi apparatus function in manufacturing. Organelles involved in a breakdown or hydrolysis of molecules include lysosomes and peroxisomes. Mitochondria in all cells and chloroplasts in plant cells, not shown here, are involved in energy processing. Structural support, movement, and communication among cells are the functions of components of the cytoskeleton, plasma membrane, and cell wall. Almost all of the organelles and other structures appearing in an animal cell are found in a plant cell, but there are some exceptions. Lysosomes and centrioles are not found in plant cells. A plant cell has some structures that an animal cell lacks. For example, a plant cell has a rigid cell wall chemically different from prokaryotic cell walls. Plasmodesmata are channels through cell walls that connect adjacent cells. An important organelle found in plant cells is the chloroplast, where photosynthesis occurs. Unique to plant cells is a large central vacuole, a compartment that stores water and a variety of other chemicals. For all cells, the plasma membrane forms a boundary between the living cell and its surroundings and controls the traffic of materials passing through inside and outside of the cell. Phospholipids are the main components of biological membranes. A phospholipid has two distinct regions, a hydrophilic phosphate group and two nonpolar hydrophobic fatty acid tails. Phospholipids form a two-layer sheet called a phospholipid bilayer. Their hydrophilic heads face outwards exposed to the aqueous solution on both sides of a membrane and their hydrophobic tails point inward, mingling together and shielded from water. Embedded in this lipid bilayer or attached to its surfaces are diverse proteins. Nonpolar molecules can easily pass through the hydrophobic interior of the plasma membrane. Therefore, these proteins aid the passage of other hydrophilic substances. The nucleus contains most of the cell's DNA and controls the cell's activities by directing protein synthesis. Eukaryotic chromosomes are made up of material called chromatin, 
which is a complex of proteins and DNA. As a cell prepares to divide, the DNA is copied and the thin chromatin fibers coil up, becoming thick as the familiar separate structures we know as chromosomes. Enclosed in the nucleus is a nuclear envelope, a double perforated structure with protein line pores that control the flow of materials into and out of the nucleus. The nuclear envelope connects with the cell's network of membranes called the endoplasmic reticulum. The nucleolus, a prominent structure in the nucleus, is a site where a special type of RNA called ribosomal RNA is synthesized according to instructions in the DNA. The nucleus directs protein synthesis by making messenger RNA according to instructions in the DNA. The messenger RNA moves through the pores to the cytoplasm and is translated there by ribosomes into the amino acid sequences of proteins. A lysosome consists of digestive enzymes enclosed in a membranous sac. Lysosomes have several types of digestive functions. In this illustration, we have a lysosome fusing with a fluid vacuole to digest the food particles. Lysosomes also serve as recycling centers for animal cells. First, the food particles are taken in by the plasma membrane. Then the membrane buds off to form a food vacuole scene. Hereafter, the lysosome fuses with the food vacuole and its appropriate digestive enzymes break up the food particles into smaller substances. This is the mechanism for cell digestion. Vacuoles are membranous sacs that have a variety of functions. In plant cells, a central vacuole, which has hydrolytic functions like a lysosome, helps the cell grow in size by absorbing water and enlarging. It can also store vital chemicals or waste products. Other vacuoles, such as the one found in a paramecium, is called a contractile vacuole, which is used for motility. Mitochondria are organelles that carry out cellular respiration in nearly all eukaryotic cells converting the chemical energy of foods into a different type of chemical energy called ATP. ATP is the main energy source for cellular work. Mitochondria are enclosed by two membranes. The mitochondria has two internal compartments. The first is the intermembrane space, the narrow region between the inner and outer membrane. The inner membrane encloses the second compartment, the mitochondrial matrix, which contains the mitochondrial DNA and ribosomes, as well as many enzymes that catalyze some of the reactions of cellular respiration. The inner membrane is highly folded with protein molecules that make ATP embedded in it. The folds, called cristae, increase the membrane's surface area, enhancing the mitochondrial's ability to produce ATP. Most of the living world runs on the energy provided by photosynthesis, the conversion of light energy from the sun to the chemical energy of sugar molecules. Chloroplasts are the photosynthesizing organelles of all photosynthetic eukaryotes. The chloroplast is enclosed by an inner and outer membrane separated by a thin intermembrane. The compartment inside the inner membrane holds a thick fluid called stroma, which contains the chloroplast DNA and ribosomes as well as many enzymes. A network of interconnected sacs called thylakoids are found inside the chloroplast. The compartment inside the sacs is called the thylakoid space. A stack of thylakoids are called granum. The cytoskeleton, a network of protein fibers, functions like a skeleton in providing for both structural support and cell motility. Three main kinds of fibers make up the cytoskeleton. Microfilaments, the thinnest fiber, intermediate filaments, and microtubules, the thickest fiber. Microfilaments, also called actin, are solid rods composed mainly of globular proteins called actin, arranged in a twisted double chain. These filaments form a 3D network just inside the plasma membrane that helps support the cell's shape. Microfilaments are also involved in cell movements. Intermediate filaments are made of various proteins and have a rope-like structure. Intermediate filaments serve mainly to reinforce cell shape and to anchor certain organelles. The nucleus is held in, by, in place by a cage of intermediate filaments. Microtubules are straight, hollow tubes composed of globular proteins called tubulin. Microtubules elongate by adding tubulin subunits. In many animal cells, microtubules grow out from a microtubule organizing center called a centrosome. Within the centrosomes is a pair of centrioles. Microtubules shape and support the cell and also act as tracks along which organelles equipped with motor proteins can move. 
Animal cells produce an elaborate extracellular matrix. This layer helps hold the cells together in tissues and protects and supports the plasma membrane. The main components of the extracellular matrix are glycoproteins, proteins bonded with carbohydrates. The extracellular matrix may attach to the cell through other glycoproteins that bind to membrane proteins called integrins. Integrins span the membrane attaching on the other side to proteins connected to microfilaments of the cytoskeleton. Integrins transmit information between the ECM and the cytoskeleton, thus integrating changes occurring outside and inside the cell. Three types of cell junctions are found in animal tissues. At tight junctions, the membranes of neighboring cells are very tightly pressed against each other, knit together by proteins. Tight junctions prevent leakage of extracellular fluid across a layer of epithelial cells. Anchoring junctions function like rivets, fastening cells together into strong sheets. Anchoring junctions are common in tissues subject to stretching or mechanical stress, such as skin and heart muscle. Gap junctions are channels that allow small molecules to flow through protein-lined pores between neighboring cells. The cell wall is one feature that distinguishes plant cells from animal cells. This rigid cellular structure not only provides protection, but provides a skeletal support that keeps plants upright on land. To function in a coordinated way as part of a tissue, the cells must have a cell junction, structures that connect them to one another. Numerous plasmodismata, channels between adjacent plant cells, form a circulatory and communication system connecting the cells in plant tissue. Through plasmodismata, plant cells share water and other nourishments. Thank you everyone for watching. Come visit us at the SSC if you have any questions. Good luck in all your studies and tune in for the next workshop.